So in the last example, we were introduced to our first algebraic property of the dot product. And I want to provide you with some other important properties, some algebraic properties of the dot product that are going to help us in deriving the geometric formula for the dot product, as well as the formula for the projection of a vector onto another vector. So here we go. To begin, we want to let vector u, vector v, and vector w be three arbitrary vectors in n-dimensional space. We also want to go ahead and let C be any scalar or constant our little hearts desire. So property number one we established in the previous example. We saw that vector u dotted with vector v is equivalent to vector v dotted with vector u. We produce that same scalar valued result regardless of the order in which we dot the vectors. The second property is that if we take a vector and dot it with itself, so say vector u dot vector u, this is equivalent to the magnitude of vector u squared. And this is important. Again, we're actually going to go ahead and prove this momentarily because we're going to need this for the derivation of the geometric interpretation of our dot product. So get excited. Property number three. So if we have the dot product of a vector w with the sum of two vectors, say the sum of vector u plus vector v, we can apply the distributive property and think of this as the sum of two dot products. So this is equivalent to the dot product of vector w with vector u plus the dot product of vector w with vector v. Property number four explores how if we have the dot product of a vector and a scalar multiple of a vector, we can play around with different orders to our advantage. So if we have the scalar multiple of a vector, so some scalar c times vector u, and we dot this with a vector v, this is equivalent to saying vector u dotted with the scalar multiple c times vector v, or my favorite method, keeping the scalar multiple on the outside. So here we have the scalar c multiplied by the dot product of u and v. So I always like to keep the scalar on the outside as we have with this last case here because it helps keep our computation, the numbers, smaller. Property number five. So what happens if I take the dot product of some vector v and the zero vector? We get zero every time, all the time. So it's not equal to the zero vector because the dot product produces a scalar valued result. And last but not least, property number six. If we have the vector v dotted with itself and this dot product is equal to zero, what does this tell us? Well, then vector v must be equal to the zero vector. So all six of these properties can be easily verified with computation. So I challenge you, I encourage you and challenge you to verify these properties for yourself. We're going to go ahead and prove property number two together so that you can see an outline for that computation proof or derivation. But it's beneficial if you go through these derivations on your own. So start by verifying them in R2. And then if you're feeling crazy, extend it into R3. So let's look at this proof for property number two together. So here we go. Property number two. We want to show that the dot product of a vector with itself is equal to the magnitude of that vector squared. Now I'm going to go through the proof for this property in R3, but I want you to keep in mind that this holds true in Rn as well. So here we go. Let's let vector u be some vector in R3. And we should specify this is a non-zero vector. So we can say that vector u is defined by the components u sub 1, u sub 2, u sub 3. So let's get started by looking at the left-hand side of this property. So we want to compute the dot product of vector u with itself. 
So here we go. U dot U, or vector U dot vector U, is going to leave us with U sub 1 times U sub 1, plus U sub 2 times U sub 2, plus U sub 3 times U sub 3, which we can easily see is equivalent to U sub 1 squared, plus U sub 2 squared, plus U sub 3 squared. And we can't go any further than that, so we'll pause for a cause here. Now let's think about the right-hand side. So we want to compute to get started here. Let's compute the magnitude of vector u. So we have the length of vector u using our distance formula is defined as u sub 1 squared plus u sub 2 squared plus u sub 3 squared. And now again, we don't just want the magnitude, we actually want to take this and square it. So let's go ahead here and square both sides of our equation, which leaves us with the magnitude of vector u squared. And now notice the square and the square root cancel each other right out, leaving us with u sub 1 squared plus u sub 2 squared plus u sub 3 squared, which looks familiar. We just showed in the previous step that this is also equal to vector u dot vector u. Oops, we did it! Woohoo! So therefore, we have confirmed that vector u, or a vector dotted with itself, is simply equal to the magnitude of vector u, or that vector, squared.